Coming at you from New Jersey, the capital of mystery, and the place where metal forgot to die. This is Here Lies Metal, the podcast that brings you the origins, history, and culture of everything metal. With our hosts, Maledictus and Samantha, they shall be your overlords for today and all of eternity. Welcome. Good evening and welcome to another episode of the Here Lies Metal Too Many Notes New Music Review. And um, what do we have today? This is a weird one. Um, we have a band called Persecutor and with their album Permanent Winter. What do we know about these guys? All right, Persecutor, uh, originally, so we're told, from Romania. Romania. Targu Mures, Romania. But now they call Los Angeles home. Um, they are a Ford piece featuring uh, Vlad the Inhaler, uh, Adam Murray, Scott Batiste, and Inverted Chris. Those guys aren't from Romania. I don't think so. I feel like Inverted Chris should be Upside Down Chris. Yeah, They're, yeah, right? Yeah, just, I don't either, know. Either, way. either way I, I get guess. it though I get but, what you're doing um, this is their debut album on Svart Records released September 4th Svart means black in Norwegian this is true um, and prior to this they had released uh, three EPs in the uh, 2013 to 2015 period as you can see right here apparently there's also an unlisted uh, LP that was released maybe 10 years ago mm. um, I think it was called Angels of Meth uh, <laughs> a lot of that. But, yeah. Okay. Okay. Um, so, all right, I have a theory about these guys. Okay, that first album, by the way, is this band before they were uh, introduced to Vlad the Inhaler. That's no, my that's theory. Vlad himself. Oh, that was just Vlad. Okay, there you go. So it was before Vlad found these guys. Okay, and how did Vlad find these guys? They weren't always together. It's very clear. Okay, so back a few years ago maybe right there's these guys and you know and they live in like you know they live like outside Los Angeles maybe like Downey or something some shitty place like that right and they're trying to make like a metal band but they're, they're not good you know like it's not for everyone right I'm not making fun of them but you know and they're having a lot of trouble they can't get gigs they don't get girls like they're just they're just these three guys that just smoke a lot of weed and drink beer and they live in their mom's basement let's look at their picture yeah I mean well yeah here we go so let's just um let's let's go into that Let's get some visual aids here, right? Okay, but so minus him out of the picture, right? So picture of these guys. And this guy probably didn't have the mask back then either because he wasn't, you know, like following this guy's rule. So anyway, so these guys are just, you know, just trying to make it. And it's not going well. So one of them goes to a flea market one day and he finds a painting of this guy, right? And he, he's got the mask on. He's got, like, all the metal stuff on, and the gloves. And he's wearing Euro glass, like, Euro trash glasses, too. Right? And they're like, and, and the guy who sold him the painting, he's like, if you summon the person, the no, he goes, who is this guy in the painting? He goes, that is Vlad the Inhaler. He's like, I never heard of him. He's like, he has, he was a very powerful magician. And it goes, really? He's like, but what what can, he's like, he can help you. You know, and he's like, how? He's like, you must summon him from the painting. And he's like, wow. So this guy, like, finds all of his occult books, and he finds out how to, like, you know, and he watches an episode of Supernatural and stuff, and he finds out how he can get Vlad the Inhaler out of the painting to help them be, a, you know, like a really big metal band, right? So, and so they contact, they they get the, they activate a spell to contact Vlad the Inhaler, and Vlad the Inhaler says, "You must get me a child for me to come out of the painting." And he's like, "A child?" And he goes, "Yes, a crack addicted child." So he's like, "A crack addicted child." So they find a crack addicted child very easily in LA and they bring they kidnap it and they bring it and they throw it in the painting and it replaces Vlad the Inhaler and he comes out of the painting. Now he's in our world, right? It's very Lovecraftian. It's also, you know, Ghostbusters too. But you know. So um so he's out and he leads them to where they are now. Because before that they weren't you know, they just weren't making it. And now we're talking about them here today. So they're obviously really big. And they're they, loose. They have yeah. videos. We only talk about huge bands here. Yeah. So um. with the guidance of Vlad the Inhaler, they're only on an upward trend. Okay. And um All right, so what is this? He came band? out of painting. Uh what did Metal Archives call them? Black metal? Oh let's something. 
Uh, let's. Yeah. Black metal. Just okay. Black metal. Let's go to their band camp. Um, so this is kind of black metal. Okay. It's more like black and roll or maybe proto black metal first wave black metal. Maybe. It's not very extreme. Yeah. But it's not very extreme. Um, you know, it's this is a genre that's not that easy to pin down. Like it's kind of like early Venom, I guess, or maybe Motorhead, or you know, in in more modern day terms, uh, more like like Midnight and Hell Ripper, and maybe this band I'm wearing, but Witcher. Um, but these guys, you know, they're definitely within that uh, tradition, but they're kind of slow. They're very stripped down. Uh, even their fast songs are more just kind of like uh, mid tempo. I would say so they they're lacking a lot of that aggression that comes with uh you think of more like a uh, first wave black metal do you say so yeah um and it gets so slow so, sometimes it almost sounds like doom hmm. like uh the song chain to the tundra yeah it doesn't have like the the brutal sound as doom though it's, it's like very just standard like thickness level of notes you know, when he came out of the painting, he did not he did not promise him brutality. He just promised yeah. him success. It's not, it's not a very heavy album, no. um, but like that song, like it's it's not doom, but it sounds kind of doomy. But it's just slow black metal riffs that sound like they're about to pass out, like they're on fentanyl or something. They, they, um, they probably are. <laughs> Uh, but it is a it's it's a menacing kind of growl vocal, which is uh, very indicative of the genre. Um, you know, it opens with this really measured opener, so it's not you know very coming at you very aggressively. It's more of like a a threat. It's more of like a a bad feeling, um, and but it, it goes into like some up tempo, good time, riffy stuff as well. Um, like, you, can you, you feel the frost at dawn, which comes in the second track? Is think, that song about Charlie, by the way? But, but again, we're mentioning Charlie again. Um, it's like maybe homage to Charlie. Listen to the words yourself, people. Go out and listen to it. He says Charlie lives. Who's he talking about? Charlie, Charlie Reeves, something, something. I thought he was saying like Johnny or something, but no, he's saying Charlie. I mean, he not is, Charlie. He, Charlie. You know, he's. Uh, I don't know. Uh, when I heard that, I was like, "Is he talking about the Overkill logo or yeah, mascot?" But, but Charlie does. He goes around the sewer with his laser beam eyes, and he just harasses thrashers that are running away. He just harasses them from the album you saw in the album cover. But yeah, that this album definitely has this feel of those these very slow plotting songs like "Chain to the Tundra" and "Arctic Cross." Um, that stand in very stark contrast to the more upbeat songs like Ice Wars. There's a lot of snow in this album. This song, this wow. album is a concept album. It says it right here in the um, theme, winter, and um, methamphetamines at the same time. Yes. <laughs> it's a weird combination. <laughs> All right. So, yeah. Uh, not too standard, but definitely within the genre of kind of black and roll, proto black metal. All right. How listenable is this? It's very. It's quite listenable. Um, you know, it's got catchy, catchy guitar riffs. It's got catchy vocal hooks. Um, it's very, it's it's very easy to understand this album. It's not challenging you. It is not punishing you in any way. Yeah. Um. You know, I was kind of wondering should they have let um Vlad the Inhaler out of the painting, and uh, yeah, they yeah, because look at this music. Like even if he does bad things, um, it, it pays off. It, it equals out because he's making fun music. Good yeah, music. production wise, middle of the road. Uh, you know, not too clean. Can hear everything very well. Yeah. Can hear the vocals very clear. Uh, you can hear every like stupid thing he says. Or no, I I, I retract that. Um, every, you know, he's not like good with um, English. Maybe it's not his first thing. So you know, he may. Some of its lyrics might sound a little bit, you know, just not up to par, but he means well. He, he, he doesn't have the English language. I think there's down. nothing wrong with the lyrics. It's not trying to be poetry here. It's a well, fucking no. black and roll record. Like, it's a fun time. Fun times. We're not going for anything deep here. I think he accomplished that very well. Yeah. But, um, you know, he's clear. The, the, the instruments are also very clear. You can hear each and every. Yeah. There's no noise in there. It's just psh, very precise yeah moving on with the instruments musically w i think we might be off the charts here below enough notes we are not enough notes not here enough notes it's not enough notes this is a very very simple album um the guitar is simple menacing but simple and the riffs are extremely dumb i mean that i say that affectionately uh they are dumb ass riffs it works um, though 
I wouldn't this. I wouldn't say that there are guitar souls on this album more as a few guitar notes, you know? Yeah, they're more just like little interludes or something. I don't know. They're not solos. And I love like there's only one guitar track at like all times, you know? Yeah. Like when he plays a solo, it just goes straight through. You hear the bass. Yeah, he doesn't like, yeah, he doesn't <laughs> rhythm over, which is all. I love when people do that. He's like, no, there's no rhythm. He's like, there's no rhythm guitarist. He's like, when you hear it live, it's this like, is how it's going to go. We're a four piece and one of our four members is just a singer. I like, like that garage feel. <laughs> I like that. Yeah. And, you know, drumming is very simple as well. And the album gets a bit repetitive, but what do you want? You know, you opened this album and this is what you, you should expect. You let him out of the painting. <laughs> I didn't. But, yeah, uh, it's uh, very accessible, extremely accessible. Maybe needed a few more notes, but, I, again, like this is clearly an aesthetic choice as well, so I don't want to harsh their style here. Like I don't, I'm not saying this is because they can't play more notes, but they just don't want to. They don't, All right, they don't need to. They don't need to. Where a Vlad the Inhaler comes from in a dark castle in the Carpathian Mountains, um, they they didn't need notes. They needed blood of the impaled and and the inhaled. <laughs> All right, this is clearly a very fun record, if you can't tell already. Um, sure, totally. This the vocals, you can hear totally. the vocals, as we mentioned, and they're typically, I found them to be dumb but amusing lyrics, like, uh, you know, on Ice Wars, bitch slapped by a Slavic hand. That's like what his mother used to tell him. She's like, I'm going to be bitch slapped by a Slavic hand if he didn't behave. And he taught them that. Yeah. That's how he... He could be whipped them into shape. He's like, you would be bitch slapped by a Slavic hand. And he'd hit them when they wouldn't do something yeah. right. And, this, and they learned. And the level of, uh, I think, you know, he's got the uh, the Tomji were Uggs in there. He knows. And they're just kind of repeating at the beginning of the Can You Feel It Fro the Frost at Dawn uh, song. I think that's kind of like the mission statement for this album. He, he was um, alive hundreds of years before Tommy G. Warrior. But he was watching Tommy G. Warrior through the painting. And he was admiring. He was like, just, man, it's very powerful. But yeah, that that sound of that of that opening of "Can You Feel the Frost at Dawn?" That's kind of like all you really need to know about the feel of this album. Um, and it, you know, again, we said this is a concept album about snow. Basically, of, <laughs> maybe the snow means the meth. No, I think it's about slow. Like the snow, you know, kind of looks like. And I, I mean, I, I seen, um, you know, Breaking Bad. It kind of looks like ice crystals almost, right? All right, and it closes with a nice song about rock and roll called Black Death Punk Skins, right. so, which has a message for people like us who might overanalyze this album. Yeah. But it is just rock and roll. Um, uh, we're going to play that because that, <laughs> they made it. a video. So usually we don't play videos here, but we're going to... We, we enjoyed the video. We, we think we'll get away with this. I, I'm, I, I think we will. Okay, so here's them. This looks this? like the Salton Sea. Okay, let me just Gotta. narrate this. So there's Vlad, there's Vlad in here. He wears Euro trash glasses, and he owns a Euro truck. This is like his own truck that he brought out out of the. No, when he got out, like in Rom was that in the painting with him? I don't think so. Like I think he just bought it from the nearest dealer when he, you know, in Romania. He like, drove it to or he, LA. Or he had, yeah, he just drove it out. He somehow drove. He found a way to drive it to LA. Yeah. So, uh, so like now these guys, this is like their success life. Like they're they're here in the Salton Sea. It looks like in California, and he rules them. This is his like little camp here. And yeah, they got dirt bikes now, and they got chicks, and they got rock and roll. And he gave that all. Look, look, and, they, and he drives his Euro truck through the desert, and he's got these these guys on dirt bikes. All right, and he's got the band on his Euro truck. So they have everything they want now. Their, their life is awesome. They got they got they got meth, they got alcohol, they got cool guitars, you know. And he and he just guides them around and say, "This is a good life. You, don't you want this life? This is cool." This is real, right? So, but what about the theme of this song? What do you think you're talking about? It's just rock and roll. All right. What's so, the theme? Well, okay. So I was listening to the words very carefully, and he goes, and he goes, and he goes, um, punk rock skins, skin. You know, like, and and I think maybe he's talking about like back in the old days, like 300 years ago when he was young, like. They were like skinheads at shows. They were punk rockers at shows. No metalheads at shows. They used to like fight with each other. It was like a thing, right? Comment down below if you remember this. And he's like, he's like, metal guys are the best. Get the fuck out of our because he's like, get the fuck out of our way. You know, skinheads, yeah, okay. punk rock. Get the fuck out of our way. So like, he's like, fuck you all. You all suck. 
crazy. He's telling us, you know, scene doesn't matter, genre doesn't matter. He's like, well, I think he's so. As I, that's why I said, like, people like us who are like, oh, what kind of genre is this? Like, does it fit within? He's, you know, he's against us. Well, he's saying the metal guys are the best, but he's like, everyone just get along. It's fucking rock and roll. Everyone fucking calm down. He's like, we're the best. But everyone fucking calm down and just deal with it. As you can see, this song is pretty awesome. I think that's what he's saying. Uh, hit single here. I like that guy's uh, dinosaur tattoo. Yeah, yeah. Look, uh, it's a brontosaurus. Isn't that nice? Any, which doesn't exist anymore. Look, he's got special Euro glasses for the pool. He's got different ones he puts on. Oh, those are different. Oh, look, he, he these guys got their own Euro glasses. I just noticed that. You have to wear the Euro glasses. Yeah, that's band. their power. Uh, so yeah, <laughs> they he's, all do. They all. Ha- it's the official glasses. He's giving. He's bringing European Romanian culture to them from 300 years ago. That's what he used to wear for years ago, these glasses like this. And yeah, he's showing them. He's teaching them. And, and there's what kind of anyway, successful layer. I think uh, this video. video can serve uh, basically as a review for the whole album. Look how short that song was, too. Uh, it was like three minutes. It was effective. You're very talkative. Uh, I was able to talk to the whole thing. But there are some slower songs on it. That's definitely one of the more upbeat and catchy songs. But yeah, it's pretty awesome. I, I do recommend this album. Uh, <laughs> yeah. It's dumb, but like... It, yeah, I like dumb shit, and if you like dumb shit, you should like it too. Dumb um, means fun, usually. Like if if you think sometimes you wish Midnight would go back to when it was really simple, and then take it to even a simpler level than that, you should listen to this album. These guys are to Midnight like how Ghoul is to Guar. Uh, right. I was speaking more musically, but well, you know, just in like development, right? I was speaking like on a musical level, but, not yeah. like on a costuming. Not like, any costume. Uh, I just meant in development, production like, you know, level. in like level of, of like just you know, yeah, maybe a production level. I think that's probably a good way. Like, well, only one thing I have to point out about this album, you know, because since you his lyrics are so clear, he says fuck a lot where it's not needed to. Like, I feel like it's not needed, like as much as he says fuck. I had no problem with how he says. Fuck. Like three hundred years ago, like they didn't know. Also, like it's not, you know, English is not his first language, so he thinks. I think he thinks he needs to use fuck everywhere. I have no so problem with the amount that he used the word fuck. He uses it too much. <laughs> it's just not necessary. And there's nothing. I'm not trying to censor him. So he's using it too much. I have I have no problem with it. Keep saying it. He gives way too many fucks than are needed. He gives them. It's like I don't need that. Well, the inhaler, come on the podcast. Tell us all about this album. I'm gonna listen, Val. I'm gonna try to find you because I'm gonna interview <laughs> people like you. So like, I'll I'll try my best. You know, I probably you know you I I won't have the you know you you'll be like you're not a very good magician. You cannot do it. You know, but I'll try. So hopefully. all right, let's look at the album art real quick. All right, so what's going on here? Uh, this is a looks like a frozen a frozen man is that on a, a blood soaked tundra. Is that a finger or a dick? No, that's a finger. Yeah. I th- I mean well, the rest it of dick. it's a hand. So I'm gonna guess it's a finger. Yeah, he wouldn't have a dick as a thing. Uh, uh, he's um, when people freeze, they turn black. Accurate. Yeah, I'm like sure Vlad has seen many uh, frozen corpses. Frozen in his, corpses in his, in his battles. Time. I don't know how cold it is in Romania, but maybe there seems to be some kind of uh, blood waterfall happening at the cliff over there. Oh yeah, look at that. Uh, in a water river of blood, like it's Vigo. Remember, like you know, you know, from a from a thousand corpses. You know, like what he says, whatever he, his line is. It's like just something. You know, he's like a he's like Vigo, kind of. Yes, from the Carpathian Mountains. Yeah, but there's ice here. I don't know if this. Maybe the ice is just like a, a homage to blackmail because there's really no, I don't know if there's really ice in Romania. I don't. I don't well, know. Well, this about. this is a snow album. Yeah, so, this album's about snow, so yeah. we've got to have ice. Yeah, so on the album cover, blood. And ice. It's like a hockey game. All right. There was no credit on whoever painted this he, masterpiece here. He, well, you know, since he was a painting, like, he knows a lot of artists. Okay. So it doesn't even matter. Usually there's art. I can find an art credit somewhere, but I could not. So I apologize to the artist that we cannot uh, give you credit for this. I think he just uh, wasn't going to give. Or uh, maybe they didn't want their name attached. Like, no, no, that's good. You could no, you work. No. You don't want me to put your name. No, no, no it's it's okay. You, <laughs> could, you could just. That's cool. I feel like I think he's missing an eye as well. Yeah, sure. When this eye is going up, his eye is looking up, and this one is not there. Yeah, he's missing one. So yeah, it's not. You know. All right, persecutor. That's it, persecutor. Check these guys out with permanent winter, and it's going to be permanent winter soon. So you know you'll have something to listen to. Uh, so. Comment down below if you like this. Comment down below if you're in this band. All right? Um, And spread the word. Thank you. Goodbye.